live from the TAP Sports Bar at MGM Grand. Time once again to go behind the book. It is that time of the week once again. Time to look at some college football and pro football, this time live from the TAP Sports Bar here at the MGM Grand, just about 20 feet away from the MGM Grand Sportsbook. I'm Gil Alexander, host of the Beating the Book podcast, available on iTunes and throughout all kinds of podcast distributors, along with the gentleman who's kind enough to pull himself away from a little bull riding odds making, right. the VP of Race and Sports at the MGM Resorts International, all up and down the strip, all of your sports books. Jay Root, hello, Jay. I'm good. I'm glad you said bull riding and not BS of uh, something else. So, yeah, you know. that's correct. Well, nice of you to come here. You're going to answer some questions for all yeah, of us. Yeah, what a great place. I mean, we're having a little uh, beer and some uh, something to eat, a tap bar. What a great, great experience for anyone to swing by the book. I mean, a huge benefit to the uh, MGM sports book here is having a place like this just feet away. What would you say, about 20 screens in here? 25, At 30? At least. Yeah, beautiful screens. Again, great More soccer well. than you can stand right now. <laughs> That's right. Soccer all day long right now. But well, we want to talk about our football, Absolutely. college and pro. You will answer some questions at the end as well? Yeah, I think there's a couple of questions. All we'll right. see what uh, we get to. We'll randomly pick some again. If you have any questions for Jay each and every week, either through the Mirage Facebook page or the MGM Grand Facebook page, please do so. Ask him. He'll answer everything. Or throughout social media, just put the hashtag behind the book, and that will get to us as well. Ready to do some college football to start things? Yeah, we got a couple of good ones. Uh, big one. Granddaddy. Big Alabama. It is. Alabama to kick things off. The first college football rankings of the season for the playoffs have come out this week jay of course they only matter really in earnest december 4th but they've come out so it gives us a little bit of weekly drama in alabama very justifiably the number one team in the country yep. and they are traveling to lsu a night game at death valley against the number 13 lsu tigers lsu was two and two if we were making this line if you were making this line three four weeks ago it's way different than it is now right now alabama seven and a half point favorites LSU has reeled off three straight wins after firing Les Miles and right. Orgeron in as the coach. And Leonard Fournette, last game, the illustrious career of Leonard Fournette, has his best game ever. 284 yards rushing last time out, but his worst game ever happened to be against Bama last year. 19 carries, 31 yards. That's a spectrum of Fournette. You got to figure he's got to have a great game for them to cover, let alone win. Yeah, this. I think a lot of people have their worst game against Bama, though. That's true. I mean, that's a pretty accurate statement in general. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, a little bit of an attitude adjustment down in the bayou, you know. So they're playing much different than they were, say, three weeks ago. Uh, Orgeron's got them playing really, really well. Uh, you know, they're they're putting up more points than they you know could have imagined uh, three, four weeks ago. Yeah. You know, they were hoping to just put up 17 and hold their opponent down, but now you know they're actually playing a little SEC ball. You know, let's put up some points. Let's you know, rely on our defense a little bit. So, um, but again, none of that counts because none of that's going to help me. Right. I, I'm trying to convince myself that LSU is going to be a great side to be on because uh, this week uh, everyone's going to be betting Bama again, um, simply because you know they're just so dominant. And you know, with the rankings coming out uh, affirming that they're number one, you know, here in Vegas we've had them number one by a long shot. You know, all the way from July, we've had Alabama yeah. number one, and so all that's doing is uh, reinforcing what we've been saying all along out here uh, you know, with uh, our, our future book on them. Alabama pretty much the New England of college football for you in terms of how you need bets to go every week? Pretty much, yeah. We almost never need Alabama. Yeah. Um, we almost never need Alabama, the New York Yankees, or the New <laughs> England Patriots. That's the life of a bookie. <laughs> All right, second game in college football. Also a big game, number 10, Nebraska, who lost finally last week. Uh, to rank to knock them out of the ranks of the undefeated there were nine undefeated teams before last week now there are five nebraska falls from the ranks of the undefeated they go to number six ohio state ohio state also with one loss ohio state last week they are 26 point favorites against right. northwestern they eke out a four point win and now jay i look up at the board they're 17 and a half point favorites hosting right. nebraska we're not going to fall for that again, are we, as well, betters? I mean, they didn't even score 26 points last week, did they? I mean, right. it was you know, a struggle to get there. So, um, you know, a lot of it is living off of historical power rankings. You know, Vegas is always really kind of slow to move the number off too quickly because we always know that lurking in the darkness are the sharps and the wise guys yeah. that, 
you know, if we're too far off, they're going to take us off of that really quick. So what we want, you know, we kind of want to put our number out on Monday, and if we want action, we'll, we'll dictate the action we want. But we don't want necessarily want to see a lot of action on Monday because that means we didn't do a great job. Um, we want you know, that number to carry maybe to the end of the week and then some, maybe some injuries and some other things dictating the, the movement on that number. Mm -hmm. But if we put out a, a 7.5 and, and it moves to 11 by Tuesday, somebody screwed up somewhere. And that's me. So that falls on me. So I don't like it when that happens. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, again, I think we might be having to root for um, Ohio State in this particular matchup. Really? Yeah. yeah, because they're not getting to the cashier window. People are going to be reluctant to put their money on 17 and a half point favorite again. They're going to probably take a shot with with the dog. I think this game will be lightly bet actually <laughs> because they've been burned on Ohio State. So they will either a take the points for a little tiny bet, or they'll stay away. Makes sense. Uh, I will take the 17 and a half. Yes. Thank you very much because Ohio State has given up 400 yards of offense two out of the last three weeks, three times this year, and that was against Northwestern last week that they did that. Northwestern is not scaring anybody offensively. Nebraska with Tommy Armstrong Jr. 17 and a half points, I'll take it. Right. Let's go to pro football. Now, Jay, I have tried as long as I could to not talk about this. We are not good at making picks. We are 0-4. Yep. And uh, last week you had Buffalo. I had Cincinnati. Yep, I'll, I'll be the Buffalo was more of a prey situation. Right. Wasn't a true pick. Don't I'm going to give out excuses, a. Jay. I'm going to give out a Don't true what I feel is going to happen pick for everyone so I can redeem myself hopefully this weekend. Now, I don't know what your case is. You've had the smorgasbord to do whatever you want to oh, do. Somehow and my you somehow are worse than suck yours. just as bad as I do. Yes. Okay. Well, as always, we have a chance to redeem ourselves. Or you could just fade whatever we say. That's yeah. also a strategy. Makes these videos so worthwhile. Uh, let's talk about two pro games, though. And let's start with a game that is not one that might catch everybody's eyes, but it's the Tennessee Titans at the San Diego Chargers. Chargers favored by five. Chargers, they were one in three, but led their first four games at the two-minute mark, with two minutes left in each yeah. of those games. And Phillip Rivers has been spectacular with all kinds of injuries around him. Last week, I had the Chargers. They were in cover position. They were at the two-yard line, first and goal. They run shotgun four straight times carried they pass every single time they don't get in i lose the bet instead of a genius i'm an idiot well well the fade the, to the corner which i i hate that play but that, so that bad produces more interceptions than any other play i think in in the history but yeah i mean san diego is definitely the wise guy pick i mean they're a team that is undervalued overperforming almost every week against the number um but last week they didn't get there and they've always been a dog being the wise guy. Will they be the wise guy choice as a favorite, though? I don't know, because Tennessee has been a, a, a favorite of the wise, uh, the Sharp community as well. Both of these teams come in, I think, sort of building on something this year a little bit. Tennessee is playing a little bit above what most people expected. And I think San Diego, although they're not getting the wins, their performance on the field is a little bit better than most people expected. So I think this is a game that I might be able to just sit back, relax, and let the, the, the action happened on both sides and not right. have to worry too much. Well, in Tennessee, we talk about how the Dallas Cowboys have this great offensive line. Tennessee might have just as good of an offensive line. Yeah. They're a sneaky pick here, I think, as five-point underdogs. That's an afternoon game on Sunday. At night, always a big decision for you in the books. Denver and Oakland, this game is at Oakland. Six and two versus six and two. Denver coming off the win against the Chargers that we just mentioned. Oakland wins in overtime against Tampa Bay. Let me ask you a question here. It's a pick -up. If Oakland does not get that touchdown in overtime and they end up tying Tampa Bay, or let's say they lose, isn't this spread just by virtue of that touchdown much different than it would have been, at least by a few points? I don't think by a few points. A might have been one and a half. One and a half. I think I'll it might have been one, and, one and, half. and a half. Yeah. But that matters. It does matter, yeah. I mean, look at uh, last week's night game, Dallas and, and uh, the Eagles. Yeah. All I need is them to kick a field goal. I mean, who scores a touchdown in overtime? <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. You know, the Dallas Cowboys, just yes. to make my life miserable. You know, we just needed someone to score a field goal. We would have been great in that game. We would have probably not got beat up as bad as we did on Sunday. Sunday was not a great day for us, and yeah. I know everyone loves to hear that. Yeah, I went <laughs> home and had a miserable afternoon. <laughs> Good. But, Good. Um, yeah, but we turned around. We got the chicken on, on Monday, so it was okay. But, yeah, a, a, a touchdown in, a, in an overtime game. 
you know, w when all I needed was a field goal to show up and we're golden. But yeah, I mean, I think there is some value to be said in this game because of the performance that they had there yeah. late. Because Oakland committed an NFL record 20 penalties last week Huge. for 200 yards. Excuse me, 23 penalties for 200 yards. That is not a disciplined football team. Right. I will take the Broncos in that scenario if Jack Del Rio can't They are a them. talented football team to overcome that, though. Yes. You have to admit that. I suppose, well, against Tampa Bay, they, they got away with it for sure. So, your chance to redeem yourself with a pick of the week. You can go NFL here. You can go college, I'm I guess. I'm going college here, and I'm going with my boy, Del Rio. His Luke son, Del Rio. Luke Del Rio, oh. uh, over uh, Arkansas, I think, at home. Laying five, uh, I believe. No, on the road, laying five at Arkansas. Oh. Um, yeah, the Florida's defense uh, is getting largely overlooked because of Alabama, but they have given up uh, a little bit over half of the points on defense that Alabama's defense has given up, which that's astonishing. Everyone thinks Alabama's defense is doing great. Florida's defense is, almost, is outperforming them. We just need the offense there in Florida to maybe – uh, perform as good as Alabama's, and, and we'll have a cover on the road there. And Even I though I don't like laying points on the road. I think people want to know what will be your excuse if this one does not go your way. Um, I'm probably hanging out with you too much. That's probably the problem. <laughs> oh. Beating the book. Oh. I'm beating myself. They Shots get it. fired by Jay Rude. Uh, I am going with the one that we talked about before. The Oakland Raiders, Denver Broncos. I'm taking the Broncos as a pick em. Again, 23 penalties, 200 yards last week. I'm not expecting them to get 23 penalties again, but you're not committing half of those and beating the Broncos. And, and I think Booker is a, a big weapon that is going to, you know, probably going to help you get there. I, I hope so. From your lips to God, as they say, Mr. Rude. Yes. Ready to answer some questions? Yes, absolutely. Let's I'm ready it. to eat. Let's eat. Tap bar. I'm waiting for my burger. Let's get some food. Tap sports bar. Good food. All right. Ready to answer some questions? Yes, I am. Let's go. Again, you can ask these questions of Jay Rude, the VP of Race and Sports at MGM Resorts International, just by asking him at the Mirage Facebook or MGM Grand Facebook page or anywhere throughout social media just by putting in the hashtag behind the book. All right, Jay, first one. I'm going to ask you three here. First one, do underdogs win in NFL ties? This is a very timely question. Are tie yeah. games in the regular season good for the NFL? So kind of two and one. Um, yeah, well, obviously, if you're betting on a point spread, Point spreads uh, are part of the game, so if you're taking plus points and you tie, the underdog wins the game, yeah, obviously. So for instance, in my scenario last week where I had the Bengals, minus three, I lose because it was a tie. Right. They didn't get there. So they count towards the point spread. If it's a money line, obviously, everybody gets their money back because yeah. nobody actually won. Um, are ties good for the NFL? Uh, I don't believe so. I, I think uh, the NFL might actually... If we would have had a couple more ties last weekend, it yeah. would have been really been interesting. Yeah. I think they're going to probably look at overtime rules to maybe somehow uh, alleviate that. But, uh, you know, it it's happens so infrequently, I don't think it has a, a huge impact. But yeah. when it does, it always comes up. I mean, those ties are going to be impactful yes. come playoff time. Who gets in, who gets out absolutely. because of the tie. And they have some impact on your season win totals as well, obviously. Yeah, right, absolutely. All right, college football question, Jay. The selection committee has Texas A&M ranked ahead of an undefeated team, Washington. Texas A&M ranked four in the initial poll. Washington ranked five. Do you agree with that? Um, somewhat, you know. I mean, I would almost have Washington and A&M. I think we have them very close to each other in our future book odds. Yeah. Um, if I was a fan, just a pure fan, and not looking at it from a bookmaking standpoint, where I'm trying to make money, um, I don't. I think the undefeated team should get rewarded for being undefeated, albeit they're not playing maybe as hard as a schedule, and everyone is discounting the Pac-12 because Stanford is not as good. Right. But That's a good point. Maybe Stanford's not as good because the other teams are making them not as good. I mean, the SEC can't be annoyed at the Golden Child every single year, and and it seems like that's occurring. So, um, you know, I think Washington will play out the string here. Now they're going to play an SEC team who has found their stride and their groove again. Yep. And if they beat them, then I think it's gonna, they're going to leapfrog whoever's in front of them at that point in time. And again, this is the first of five polls, five college football rankings. That so it will, means absolutely nothing. Yeah, that will precede the December 4th one, which is the only one that ultimately matters to determine which four teams are in the actual FBS playoffs. But it's our kind of reality television now to talk about this every week right. and argue about it. Final questions, Jay. Oh, you'll like this one. Uh, this is from Matt Peabody. Actually, I think Matthew Peabody. I think this is a great question. Good job, Matt, because I have been talking about this for years. 
and any serious sports better has as well. Will we ever get points or comps for sports <laughs> betting? Nice ah, question, nice Matt. Nice question, yeah. What do you got, Jay? Um, you know, um, the, the, most people don't realize that Race and Sportsbook, we operate on such a low hold. Your average grocery store makes a higher margin on their uh, business than we do. Uh, everyone thinks we're just hand over fist, making money, ah, <laughs> laughing to the bank. <laughs> Not exactly the case. Um, but uh, we do reward our players at the counter, and we're in the middle of a system changeover. Mm -hmm. And once we have a system that's capable of being able to track everything, uh, we will probably roll in our loyalty program into that. Okay. So it's coming, Matt. Hang in there. Can, can I ask one follow-up to that? Sure. What might be the ratio, not going to hold you to it, of dollars bet to points? Um, traditionally, probably in the uh, sportsbook world, when you're betting mm -hmm. uh, on sports, we're going to be able to break it down. That's why I want a system that we can break it down. So if you bet a straight bet, I'm probably going to give you about a 1% on it. If you bet a parlay, probably one and a half, two percent. Okay. So, and if you bet a future bet, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, two percent as well. But then you know, when you get into parimutuel horse racing, it's a little bit different. I'm willing to go, you know, two and a half, three, four and a half, four percent maybe. Okay. Depending on, you know, what you're playing. That's playing. something. Yeah, absolutely. That's something. All right. You bet sports enough? Yes. It will absolutely get you benefits, not only at the property in which you are betting. It's like a CD, you know? I mean, yeah. if you put it in for six months, you get a certain interest. You put it in for two and a half years, you get you get more. So an, an the more you're invested, analogy. the more you get returned. An excellent analogy. So, and it doesn't have to be at the sports book property that you bet at any of the MGM Resorts it, properties. Yeah, it'll accumulate throughout all the properties. Restaurants, whatever you're doing. Well, anyway. that already happens on your M Life card. Yes. Yeah, you spend at the restaurant, you get points. Right. All right. Well, sports like betting. Like the tap bar. Sports betting may be added to that whole thing, or at least improved when you get all the new yes. stuff in. Yes. Great question, Matt. We hear Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Again, all questions asked of Jay. Again, put in the hashtag behind the book or just do it directly at the MGM Grand Facebook page or the Mirage Facebook page. For Jay Rude, the VP of Race and Sports for MGM Resorts International, I'm Gil Alexander. Once again, host of the Beating the Book podcast. Good luck with all of your Week 9 bets in the NFL and college football. Love to see you come down here and hang out with us live at the MGM Grand.